Welcome to you all. Yes, you. Welcome to Esther's Pills. It's your girl, Esther Chuku. Always right on time to bring you the latest information on scholarships in Japan. Today, I'm talking about the Mexed Young Leaders Program to study in Japan for 2021. What is the Young Leaders Program about? Well, I would like to give you a brief information about the Young Leaders Program. Actually, it is a program aimed at cultivating future national leaders in Asia and other countries to establish friendly relationships amongst these participating countries. Their aim also is to improve policy planning and form um, how do I say uh, a network of national leaders. Um, there are about 16 countries who are members of this uh, network and these countries are the People's Republic of China, the Republic of Korea, uh, Indonesia, uh, Myanmar, Malaysia, the Philippines, Thailand, uh, Vietnam, uh, Laos, um, Cambodia, uh, Mongolia, Singapore, India, South Africa, Turkey and Bangladesh. I hope I got them all correctly. <laughs> there are about 16 of them. So those are the 16 countries who participate in the uh, Mexed Young Leaders uh, program. Well, um, part participants must be of the legal profession. I mean, they should be lawyers working in their countries or working in the legal units of um, institutions in their countries. And the host university for this Mexed scholarship is the Kyushu University <laughs> yeah so it is the Kyushu University's graduate school of law that will be hosting this program for 2021 this year and the duration is from October 2021 until September 2022 it's about one year program okay now what are the qualifications if you want to apply? What do you need to do? First of all, you have to be a national of one of these 16 countries I just mentioned. China, Korea, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, and so on. There are about 16 countries I mentioned. I'll list them in the description box below just for reference purposes. So you have to be a national of one of these countries. And the second, um, second requirement would be uh, your age. You have to be... Uh, at least under 40 years of age as at until the first of you should be at least 40 years as at the first of october 2021 meaning you should be born on or after second of october 1981 so anything above that sorry too late okay now the third requirement is your academic background so you should have high level achievements in your undergraduate studies okay um, and the fourth will be your English proficiency. It's a common thing in all of these scholarships. So, uh, TOEFL and IELTS, good scores. I think the IELTS minimum should be about 6.0 in the academic module, something like that. Yeah, you, you, you would verify in the scholarship announcement. I'll leave the link to scholarship announcement in the description box below, okay? Um, I think the fifth requirement would be your work experience. Um, as the name goes, it's for young leaders uh, and they expect people who are already working. So you should have at least four years experience working at your home countries. I mean, four years from your graduation to the time of application for this scholarship, okay? So you should have like four years experience working in the legal unit or as a lawyer in your home countries. And um, not just part-time working, I mean full-time working, okay? Then the sixth requirement would be for you to be physically and mentally fit. It's an, it's a requ it's, it's mandatory, and that's why you're gonna have um, a certificate of health that would prove that you are physically and mentally okay <laughs> for the program. Okay. And uh, what's the next? Mm, the seventh requirement would be for you to arrive in Japan on or after two weeks of the commencement of your studies. Okay, so you should be able to arrive two weeks before you start or at most two weeks after lectures have started. So you should be in Japan. And the eighth requirement would be to get a student visa. So you should come to Japan with a student visa. If you have like, if you're already Japanese, I don't think you're gonna qualify for that. But I don't know, I'm just saying go. All right, so. What are this? Uh, sorry. Now, 
what are the benefits in store for anyone who gets the max young leader scholarship program for japan 2021 well the benefits include one um you're gonna be paid monthly stipend of 242 thousand japanese yen every month <laughs> But this amount is subject to change. It's subject to whatever the Japanese fiscal policy for the year is. So if it's, it can be higher than that or lesser than that, but just have that as, as a range, okay? 242,000 Japanese yen. And the second benefit would be, be uh, your travel costs will be covered by MEXT. So you get economy class tickets from your home countries to Japan for your studies and also back to your countries at the end of your studies, okay? And of course, your travel cost excludes your travel insurance. So have in mind that you're going to pay for your travel insurance. It's it's not it's nothing that it's not a big deal. You can do that, okay? The third benefit would be um, your entrance and tuition fees will be covered already by Max. So you don't get to pay any fees, no tuition fees, no entrance fees. All taken by Max. Wonderful. <laughs> And the fourth one would be you get to apply for accommodation. Okay, so you get to apply for accommodation even before you come to Kyushu University on the time of your application, you apply for accommodation and you get um, university dormitory rooms reserved for you once you get here. Okay. Now, what is the application procedure? How do you apply for this scholarship? Please pay attention. It's got lots of things you need to do. The very first requirement or the very first thing you need to do is to go to the website or the link to this scholarship announcement. It's in my description box below, okay? So go there, download the application form and fill it, okay? So the first thing you need to do is to fill your application form and affix a recent passport photograph of yourself on the pass or on, on the application form, okay? So I fill the application form, I fix a passport, and make a photocopy because you're going to send one original copy and one photocopy of that application form in your in your application document package. <laughs> in your application package, okay. So that's the first thing. And the second one would be for you to send your official transcripts or academic records, okay? So one original copy and one photocopy of the academic records the third would be a recommendation letter so you get a recommendation letter from the recommending institution that is sending you to japan it could be uh, the, the the company you work for the institution you work for in your country or maybe your your embassy your country or there is an institution recommending you for this program okay so you have to get a recommendation letter from them and you have to send one original copy and a photocopy okay in your list in your documents to send okay now the where am i the, the fourth <laughs> the fourth requirement will be two recommendation letters for you now these recommendation letters are uh, one should be written by your boss wherever you work so maybe your direct supervisor or the direct boss at your office where you work and at least uh, your supervising professor in the university you attended so you should have one from each of them so one from your place of work one from your school of graduation i mean your first degree okay and you, of course you also send one original copy and one photocopy of each making four copies right two originals two photocopies <laughs> take note of these details they're really 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 important and then the fifth um the fifth thing uh, you have to do in your application procedure is your certificate of health in the scholarship announcement you get a link where you can print out the form with which you take to the designated uh, hospitals where you can get certified as to fitness to come to Japan okay so the Japanese embassy in your country would have a list of hospitals or health institutions where you can go and get um, tested or certified to be fit okay so with the form you go to these hospitals you get tested you get whatever needs to be done and um, yeah a, a physician or a doctor gets to sign that you're okay to come to Japan for studies and then uh, you have to send the original copy of that certificate of health 
and a photocopy of it together with a scholarship application okay and the sixth uh, document you need to attach will be your official diplomas or degree results so you have to send one original copy of your degree certificate and one photocopy so you need two copies of that or if you don't get the original copies and you have a, a, a clear photocopy of the originals you should have it certified or notarized in a court of law somewhere like a, a, a legal institution stating that this is the, a, a copy of the originals of your results or something okay but yeah that's it seventh requirement would be an essay you get to write an essay of about three pages um, stating your expectations for the young leaders program okay so you, you write about what your long-term goals are your short-term goals uh, what you expect to, to to learn from the program and how you plan to make good use of whatever you learn from this program in your life and why you think you should be awarded this, this scholarship okay so these are things you get to write in your essays Remember, it's a three-paged essay written of course in English <laughs> okay so that is the seventh the eighth document you have to attach would be uh, a photocopy of your international passport or your certificate of uh, citizenship if you don't have a passport well, of course you should have that okay so please don't send the original copies of your international passport so two photocopies of your international passport will just be okay all right then the ninth the ninth uh, document you get to attach would be your your english proficiency results so if you have written toyota or ielts then um, yes you get to attach two copies of them so one originals and one photocopy of the results to to, to to be sent okay together with your scholarship application Rem remember for your IELTS it has to be the academic model okay so not just the general exam but the one for academics okay so yeah and the next one um, the tenth requirement would be um, in the scholarship announcement um, you get questions yeah some questions you have your total answer in essay form kind of um, so you get to answer at least one of those questions so your 10th requirement will be your answer to one of those essay questions found there in the website so um, you write those questions and it should be um, you send one original copy and one photocopy so, all right so that's the application procedure now um, there are some things I needed to take notes okay take note of this of the following information one is your documents must be in English so if you have them in any other language other than English have them translated to English and send both copies I mean send the original document in your language together with the English translated copy and make photocopies of each of them okay and attach to your uh, application uh, package then the second will use A4 paper as your standard for all submitted documents. So like when you ask to write three page essay, it should be like three A4 paper size. Okay. All right. So that should be your standard of paper measurement. Okay. Another point you should be in mind is uh, one of your recommendation letters should be from your place of work. So one of your recommendation letters must be written by your supervising boss at your place of work. Another point you should bear in mind is to number your documents, the list of documents you get to send, please number them by order of how they are listed in the announcement. You invited the first thing is your application form, the passport on it, so you put number one at the top right hand side of that document. The second is a transcript of number two. The third would be a recommendation letter from your recommended institution, people number three. So number each of them in order of importance as mentioned in the scholarship announcement. I don't know why, but you know, <laughs> these guys, they pay too much attention to details. I, I did that when I was applying for mine. So you, you should do that. And it's stated here as something you should do. So please, please make sure they are numbered and are organized the way it's stated there in scholarship announcement. So number them and arrange them the same way before putting them in the envelope with which you're going to send, okay? And finally, uh, again, uh, another important point would be try to learn some Japanese. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, try to learn some Japanese if you 
Japanese expressions, some basic words, greetings, some information about the culture, how things are done, as much as you can, okay, because it's gonna be useful for you when you eventually go to Japan, okay. And again, what else? Your English test results should be at least two years or the below. So if it's above two years, then it's not valid, okay? So take note of that. Right, so uh, bear in mind that all classes will be conducted in English, so which is why your English proficiency has to be uh, good to be awarded this scholarship. So all classes will be in English, and at the end of your program, your master's degree will be conferred to you. That's it. And of course, don't forget to like or subscribe. <laughs> like I always say, when you subscribe, your fingers get smoother. <laughs> don't you think so? It's true. Try it. Just click and you see the smoothness. <laughs> Alright, so that's it. Um, uh, I'm sure you'd have lots of questions or there are some points you didn't really get well. Uh, just bear in mind that I'm going to leave the link to the scholarship announcement in the description box. And feel free to write your questions, your comments, your concerns in the comment section below. And of course, I always tell you, feel free to give your feedback, whatever you think went wrong, or areas of improvement. Let me know. Have you got to write? <laughs> okay, so that's all for today. And thank you so much for sticking along with me thus far. And hope to see you in my next video. And like I always say, until I see you next time. Be nice. Ciao or sayonara in Japanese. Bye.